Hello and welcome to this tutorial and thanks for stopping by to check it out. Please subscribe to our channel, like this video, go to our website tutorialsxl.com for new contents and also check out our discounts on online training courses. So now, we will be working with the AWS Lambda in this tutorial. Now, first thing first, you need to make sure that you have the AWS Toolkit uh, extension installed in your uh, uh, Visual Studio. We are using Visual Studio 2019. So I'm gonna head over to New Project. Notice that I can select the AWS platform and we need to create a Lambda project. Now, uh, I'm gonna create a Lambda project with the tests and I'm gonna hit Next. So I'm gonna say TXL YouTube AWS Strange name I know uh, I'm gonna say AWS Lambda App And we're gonna create This application Now notice we are Presented With the sample code That we can use to create a out of the box lambda that can talk maybe to uh, sc3 to sns to sqs even even kinesis okay and all these different uh, let's say uh, applications that we can use now I prefer to go with very simple uh, thing for you just for this tutorial and I'm going to select to create a new empty function so you can like get started easily so now after the project will be created make sure when you create or install the application you go to the AWS console and create a new project okay or a new user so you can access it now if you notice with me the lambda itself is quite simple okay the lambda is just a serverless function that concerns itself with a let's say microservices way just a simple function that will do a simple task now also we have uh, the tests over here so if you check out the readme file here is some information how you can like do some work for the lambda function okay now let me explain the code for you first thing first we have this class of function now this class of function will have this function handler which is the uh, default value or the default function to handle the operations on the function now we also have if you notice inside these parameters we have the input that we want to receive and the i lambda context now the context contains some information about like the request that is happening maybe you want to see the request id that is returning okay each request will have its own unique id also if you want to see the function name the function version all these things now notice that this function does a really simple thing it just return uh, the string like take this input and retain this upper this string now let's head over to the test over here and notice with me that it's just a really simple test it takes the function class it create a test lambda function and over here you will call the function handler now for sure your class will be or let's say your function will do something more useful than just 
uh, having an upper case function that is for sure now let's head over back to the function okay and let's assume that we wanna uh, have an input okay and this input shall retain some object data to us okay so let's add a new class this class will be maybe I'm acquiring about customer okay and let's say we have the customer name and we have the let's say the join date uh, let's say customer since okay and let's say that he has some points balance okay now this is just some random data for our customer and we're gonna assume that our function will return a customer it will receive uh, this input it will look for a customer inside uh, a list of customers so let's create a new list of just dummy customers okay and inside the list over here we're gonna say customer customers equal new list of customers I'm gonna just add a single customer single dummy customer to it and let's say its name is Joe maybe it's customer since let's give it a new date time let's give it maybe 2000 uh, one one okay and let's say that he has five points what we will do we will send the customer if it's available okay so let's do that return the customers dot first or default okay and the name is equal to the input so now we have our function created it will take the customer name and it will return its data now while working with AWS I always recommend staying with the AWS toolkit because it will make your life very easy so you have now this lambda function that you want to upload to the cloud for sure you think that you need maybe to do a publish and so on but this will take too much time now you just simply hit right click on the lambda project and you will have the option to publish the project to the AWS lambda cloud and we're gonna select this notice you can select the runtime over here you can give it a name if it doesn't have name you can select the configuration and so on so i'm gonna give it its uh, appropriate name hopefully it's not taken and this is like some settings to it the assembly name the function and so on now you can also select the region you find that's suitable and we're gonna hit next okay uh, okay this is good this is good because we need uh, permissions and policies okay uh, for this we need uh, these policies to be enabled inside our own uh, user so we can connect 
to them so I'm gonna add these policies I'm gonna pause the video and come back uh, you need to head to the IAM of your uh, user and add these policies so after attaching the correct permissions let's hit next now you will get to give it a policy so it can like uh, work with I'm gonna just give it the full access now for sure you wanna be really careful with your application uh, like especially these permissions can be like taken easily so notice that I can set my configuration like how much memory shall it take what is my timeout and so on now I'm gonna upload this and you will notice these two options that this will open the lambda function viewer which will allow me to test uh, the lambda function directly from visual studio and also it will close the wizard unsuccessful so again your life is way easier with the aws toolkit you just need to uh, install it and it will do whole lot of work for you without you need to do anything manually now this will take for sure some time it's need to compile your application and upload it to the correct uh, region and uh, like after that it will be uh, available for execution now as far as I remember of the lambda pricing the pricing is uh, really really low it's also in the execution time okay okay we have an error over here since okay there is just like uh, some missing configuration uh, to uh, like to show uh, on the uh, to show you the function well okay let me just show you the pricing we're gonna function fix the function over here now I went to lambda slash pricing and notice that we have uh, 1 million requests per month 400,000 gigabyte seconds and so on and this is the pricing each 1 million request imagine that look how cheap it is you just need to pay 0.2 for each 1 million request and each request it's nothing to mention so it's very cheap and it doesn't cost too much so now I'm gonna try to fix the permission for a second time so finally I was able to run my uh, function unfortunately like because the wrong uh, region it did not work now you can have some sample requests over here okay where you can like uh, hit the lambda and check out the results that you will receive so I'm gonna just use the hello world example I'll just give it this key I'm gonna give it input of type uh, let's say the name of Joe hopefully this is the correct request format okay uh-huh uh-huh okay so well since this is like JSON we need I'll just do the following I'll just pass this invoke it and yes we have a results notice that this is the same value that we have added it if I send a wrong value I will not receive anything so as you can see we were able to run our own lambda function in the cloud and we can now see the results that we receive now in case you update your code over here okay 
you could simply let's come down here you could simply just from here upload the new sources and you will have your lambda function updated so this was a quick tutorial in how to create an aws lambda function i hope you enjoyed this tutorial please subscribe to our channel like this video and go to tutorialsxl.com for great online training courses thank you for watching